you ever wish you could come up with new ideas for different types of painting backgrounds? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you some top tips on how to produce eight different textures for backgrounds, but with using really simple techniques coming up. Hi again there guys, Emma here from Paint and Pinot giving you some top tips for all things art and design and today is all about backgrounds, how to come up with new ideas, how to try different textures and also some of those tools that's going to make it so much easier for you to try different background techniques. So let's get straight into the video, here we go. So top tip number one is a basic shower cleaner. These are fantastic for producing really flat backgrounds. So if you're looking for something quite basic or if you may be doing something that's a bit more pop arty and you just want a flat background of color, or even if you're just priming your canvas, these things are fantastic because they can drag a vast amount of paint across your canvas really, really quickly. And you get a much more flat surface than you would do if you were just using a paintbrush. Tip number two, can't not have a paintbrush in this list. The most basic tool, obviously, when it comes to painting. But if you want to try different techniques, these are just the most simple things for doing different types of effects. But one of my favorite effects and the simplest way to get a really effective background is to actually start from the center and work your streaks out. These are brilliant for things like floral designs. I've just done a recent ballerina painting where you can get that sense of the tutu. Anything that's even like a sunset, these are the really simple strokes that you want to try, but you want to get that straight wrist so you're not getting those bent curves as you're doing your lines out. Tip number three, you cannot go wrong with a tissue. If you want to be environmentally friendly, you can use like a cloth or a, any, any fabric basically. I like using tissues because you just get a little bit more control. And the technique I'm going to show you this time is just simply to produce a flower effect like so. And these are fantastic for doing stippling effects. If you're trying to create an atmospheric painting, for example, this one here, where I've gone for like a moon sort of dusk evening effect, um, or even if you're just doing any sort of textured painting, these things are fantastic for that. Tip number four, one of my favorite tools of which I've done many paintings with is the good old sponge. These are fantastic for various different effects. Obviously you can do the stippling effect. You get different types of sponges like this. The one I really love is where you actually blend the colors together, particularly if you're doing a nice fast sunset painting, for example. These things are brilliant at doing a vast area. So you can even go really large like a wall that I did recently with a, a Bob Ross painting, or then just on your simple canvas to blend the paint through. But if you want to have control, these are what you want to use, just your basic sponge. Tip number five is cardboard. If you're somebody who is a bit nervous about using a palette knife, cardboard is fantastic. So just a basic, simple ripped off piece of cardboard and you can use it like a palette knife. So if you want to create a nice textural background or even a more impressionist background, cardboard gives you a lot of control and it enables you to work in a really quick way. Sgraffito is where you actually load up your background with a wax crayon. And then you actually want to paint over the surface with black acrylic mixed in with some fairy liquid or some washing liquid. When it dries, you get the most incredible effects where you can actually scratch away the surface and it reveals that colored background. So if you want to try something a little bit different or if you want to do something with the kids over the holidays, this is a brilliant technique and I recommend that you try it. Back to my tissue, but this time to actually produce a textual background using just the circular motion. This is fantastic if you're doing something like a, a floral painting because you get that gorgeous, almost abstracted feel to your paint. But the fact that there's texture there, it really does help to hide any sins if you're not particularly good at blending paint. So give it a go, guys. You're basically putting the paint straight onto the canvas just with a brush to start with, and then you're working the paint whilst it's wet with this tissue, and you'll be amazed at the effects that you can get. And now, if you're staying to the end, you're gonna actually see my favorite, favorite trick. These are just basic painter's brushes. You can buy them for $5 each down the local hardware store. If you stick a load of these together, I've only managed it with three so far, you basically want to tape them together like so. You can actually then produce unbelievable effects when it comes to blending really quickly. So all you do is simply blend the paint down the side of the canvas and then you just drag it across with two or three strokes of the paintbrush and you get the most effective 
blending techniques. These are brilliant, of course, for things like sunsets, or if you're doing water or motion, you really get that gorgeous blending technique coming through. Question of the day, I'd love to hear from you guys. What techniques do you use for your backgrounds? Have you got something that you've tried at home? I know a lot of people like to use cling film where they kind of make a more abstracted background. I'd love to know if there's anything that you've tried that perhaps I haven't even thought of at this stage. If you have enjoyed the video, then please do hit that like button just below guys as it really does help our channel. And if you'd like to see some more weekly top tips, just like these today, we do upload videos every Wednesday and Saturday, so please hit that subscription button and notification bell so that you know when we're coming back online. Alrighty guys, we'll see you next time. Happy painting.